Right, hi guys, and this is uh, Devlog 6, and you're probably wondering where the bloody awful noise is coming from. Well, that's me getting the music into the actual game itself now. Um, I nicely sent a YouTube video of the actual game, someone playing the game, and I was able to chop sound effects from that to actually place into this game. Uh, you see a lot has changed since the last devlog. So we've got the graphics on the left and right hand side, flanking the board, and we've got a nice little uh, scoreboard at the top. Bit of animation on the lights, line up the actual uh, scoring holes. And we've got this uh, before, before the beginning of the game, the scrolling up and scrolling down of the screen. So when we get to the top, this will start scrolling back down the screen itself. Back to the start. Um, what else have we got in there? Uh, yep, so new scoreboard as well. Not scoreboard. Um, hole board, lager board, playfield. Playfield with all the holes in. Um, three different size holes, the scoring hole, the smallest, and then you got the medium size hole and the larger holes. And this was derived from a new image that I found in my first devlog, I believe. And those images there I used to actually recreate the board using my arcade game layout. So you can see this, uh, the red dots on here are the scoring boards, sorry, the scoring holes. Scoring balls, I'm talking about. So, those are scoring holes. The green ones are the normal. No, the green ones are the larger size holes. That's it, they're the large holes. And the blue ones are the normal, I call them mid size holes. And I've got this from a arcade forum, if I remember rightly. Yeah, so I'll go back to. There it is. There it is. There it is. So, there we go. So these are the actual uh, holes themselves, all marked by someone, I forget who this was, it's crazy vice, but it gives you the actual width and the height of the playfield. And the red, blue and green holes. So the red one is a 20mm hole on the playfield. Blue 25 and green 30, and I use those size holes in my actual um I've created a class called arcade mechanic sorry arcade machine technical spec so I feed those in here because everything is to scale so the actual uh, board itself is to scale the holes themselves I actually work out the ratios of what they should be in pixel form for the actual game width that I pass in so from here, large hole 30, scoring hole 20, and missile hole 25. And I work out a, taking the largest hole, I actually work out what the ratio to that play field is. So I'll actually pass in the play field width there, which is 416 uh, millimeters. And I divide that by the largest hole to get a ratio of what the largest hole to play field ratio is in real, in actual physical machine. Actually, the actual where uh, if it was standing there in front of you, I then use that and pass in the game width itself um, and times that by the largest hole, and that gives me the base hole diameter in pixels for that actual game width. So that allows me to keep everything to scale. So from that base hole diameter in pixels, I actually can times that um, by different ratios. So I work out my mid-size hole diameter ratio by dividing the mid-size hole diameter, which is 25, divided that by the largest hole diameter, uh, which is 30. And that gives me a ratio of what that should be. And I can use the... Uh, that uh, mid-size diameter ratio times it by the actual uh, base hole diameter in pixels and that gives me the actual uh, the, the mid-size hole 
diameter in pixels and it keeps everything in uh, proper um, scale to the actual original physical game which is quite nice and it allows, also allows me if I want to scale this game width up for other devices say if I wanted to create a massive save CPU um, yes it's CPU uh, speed processing power was limitless I can actually scale this right up to whatever I wanted and create a massive output for a huge VDU and everything will be in proportion that's what I'm actually aiming for with this and yeah there's the uh, I just turn an object and I use that at a later date for when I actually create the holes on screen so you see the holes on screen are all now before these were quite uh, I think there was only a few a few holes that I had I was missing uh, a set of holes so those are on there now uh, as I said before I've got the uh, what have I got the flanking uh, images, images in from the original game I've recreated this bottom bit image before it disappears oh, it's gone this bottom image has been recreated in Inkscape so that is an SVG I want to do the same for these these actually as SVGs and I've got a nice graphic at the top that I've created for the actual scoreboard with some nice digital font output there so that's all good and if I hit space you notice this, um, you had a, a scrolling effect as well so I'll show you that in a moment but I just want to show you that the sound effects right now don't worry about this hole here that's where it all actually originates from I've still got some work to do on there sound effects, we've got a ball graph, I don't know if I had that ball graph last time, I'm sure, but we've got, I've got these, um, so they work, so. oh, I'm out of time, all of a sudden that's gone through that hole, what's it talking about, so this ball graph, I've, I've taken the sensitivity of the ball right now, but you'll see it will stop on this uh, point here, so this is a polygon um, collision map that I've placed over here, Using um, physics editor, which is used in the trials. Um, I'll stop doing that now because it's really annoying. Um, seven day trial to actually make hit maps, collision maps uh, for your images. Um, oh, yeah, lost again, so I've got nice hoops coming up there. But you can see the scrolling up and down as well. Um, so when it scrolls to the top, what will happen is that it'll hit the top and then it'll scroll back down and this is called a camera pan so I jump to my code it's not my code that's not my code come on there we go it's the code if I jump into the game.js here we go so do uh, camera pan. Let's just cancel that because there's a don't save. When I hit because I've got um my catcher software on minus and plus, so I hit pl minus and it's uh erasing the code. So I don't really want that. Well, I do want the code, but I don't really want it erased. So is he stupid? Right, where are we? Got a lot of refactoring to do around here, so this is where the uh, the sounds are added, and I've got some some sound effects and music, actual sound effects and music, quite a lot in there. And I've created parameters for the volume and music level in there. But those are just base parameters, but I've gone off a tangent there. What I'm looking for a camera, so set up camera. Um, this sets up obviously sets up the camera. But because I've added the pan events, we can actually listen to the pan um, pan completed event here. And what I do is I set a camera state. So when we start, the camera state 
is set to pan up. So, so what will happen then is when it's set to pan up, it will, let's just find that pan event. So here, this is on the create event. Yeah, create event. We set the pan up state for the camera. Uh, if we go and find that event, there we go. So the, the first thing it does is tells the camera to pan to the top of the screen. So zero is the actual top of the world. And ball start position is in the middle, so I use that. Um, and I say the pan it for the speed that I've set in the config. So I think that's around about six seconds it takes to get to the top. When it hits the top, the pan event complete fires, which allows me to listen in and say, right, I've set my camera state to pan up. This is fired. So camera state is pan up. So we set it to pan down and we, we actually then create a pan to go from our current position to the ball start X and the ball start Y position, which will be the bottom of the screen, and tell it to go off and do that. And because that pan, the camera state is set to pan down, the next cycle around, when this event has been completed, it will be fine that it's pan down, and it will actually create the pan up event, um, set that one off, and it just flip flops in between them until someone decides to press the space bar and start the game where well, the add ball is um, added add ball is added let me actually find that before I confuse everybody so ball add ball add ball add ball there we go add ball so when I fire this I've got a little bit of coding here called, called reset FX. So that actually tells the pan to stop panning up and down or zooming or whatever we're doing. And it will actually reset the um, pan. So it reset all the FX on the cameras with its shake, pan, zoom. And that allows me to break out that pan. And you'll see that the and then pan back down. Yeah, pan back down somewhere. What was that? Really got neat up the code there. We go, so we've cancelled the FX. Set the camera state to add ball, and we pan back down to the bottom. So when this pan completes, we get another event fire. And if you remember in that event, I've got this add ball, and I want to just do is say my camera state is no longer, no longer fiddling about with panning the camera. So just follow the ball and off we go. And that starts to get the game off. Um, the sound effects I've taken, I don't know if I've already told you this, but the sound effects I've taken from a YouTube video that was sent to me of someone actually playing the game. And I've cut them out of there. And that allows me to use all those effects. So I took some time and even cutting, chopping effects out of the YouTube video, including the, the Goddamn horrible music, and yeah, it's as annoying as the original machine, but it's all got all the love in there with, with those sound effects. I want to build it as close to the original as I can. Uh, I think that will do for this log. In the next log, I'll go through the actual gameplay because I want to now the glank gameplay now and put some effects in there probably zooming in and out of the holes and etc etc um yeah uh, that's it and i'll leave you with the horrible music there you go i might have this on loop for an hour no, i won't i would probably kill myself right that's it cheers a lot people and i'll see you in the next uh devlog <laughs>